Today we're going to continue working on our downstrokes and our upstrokes using an exercise called Bucks Breakdown. This exercise is very similar to the exercise Grasshopper, except now we have accented notes and unaccented notes called taps. Let's check it out. You'll see that the exercise is very similar to Grasshopper, but now some notes are accented. The accented notes should be played at 9 inches, and the notes that aren't accented should be played at 3 inches. Let's figure out the stroke types we should use in order to accomplish this. The first note starts high and ends low because the second note is soft. The second note starts low and ends high because the third note is loud. We call this motion bucks when we have a downstroke followed by an upstroke. In the second measure, we continue the downstroke on the downbeat. Then we have a rebound stroke at three inches with our left hand on the T. Then we have an upstroke with our right hand on the T. We repeat that three more times. Skipping ahead to measure four, we have a downstroke on the downbeat, an upstroke on the tay, and a rebound stroke on the ta. The reason the right hand uses an upstroke on the tay is because the next right hand note is loud on the downbeat of two. Skipping ahead to the final measure, we have a downstroke on the number, a rebound stroke on the T, an upstroke on the T, and a rebound stroke on the top. The underlying motion in this exercise is what we call the bucks motion. It's what we were working on in the exercise Mr. Freeze. That's when you have a downstroke followed by an upstroke, and you repeat that pattern. In this exercise, we'll have that motion continuing through the entire exercise with one hand, whichever hand is your lead hand. If I'm playing the exercise right hand lead, my right hand will play eighth notes with an accent tap pattern all the way through the entire exercise. The left hand will be responsible for filling in all the notes that are not accents on the T's and on the Ta's. The first pattern sounds like this. You'll see that my right hand plays 9 inch notes on the numbers and 3 inch notes on the Ta's. My left hand plays the T's in the second measure, and it never comes above three inches. Pattern two looks like this. Again, you'll notice my left hand never comes above three inches, while my right hand is responsible for all the downstrokes and upstrokes. The final pattern fills in the T's and the Ta's with the left hand in measure two. It sounds like this. We can also play the same exercise left hand lead, 
meaning the left hand will be responsible for the, all the accents and taps, and the right hand will only play the T's and the T's. Remember when you're practicing this exercise that we should be using our wrist to move the stick. When we play an accent, turn the wrist back to 9 inches for the accent, and all the tap notes should be no higher than 3 inches, a very tiny wrist stroke. Remember also to keep the hand that's not playing, your tacit hand, very close to the center of the pad and at a downward angle. This will make it a lot easier to play those T's and T's at the correct stick height. Two, ready, go. Go. Hey guys, don't forget that you can reach out to me if you ever need help with anything. You can leave a comment on this video, or you can reach out through Google Classroom or email. You can also follow Keller Central Percussion on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. When you're practicing, don't forget to use a metronome. Start slow and make little 5 BPM adjustments each day. Before you know it, you'll be playing these exercises faster than you thought you could. If you're struggling, don't give up. Just remember, slow it down write it down, or break it down. See you guys later.